I'm very sorry that I just arrived uh, 10 minutes ago. I was stuck in uh, the airport in uh, Trondheim uh, inside an airplane for about three hours and then out again. But I think the nice things, thing with discussing privacy and dis discussing informed consent is that you actually can arrive five, minute, five hours too late to a meeting and people are still sitting there and discussing and disagreeing probably. Um, I'm not going to give a long speech now because I'm just going to introduce the other speakers, but uh, very, very short. Uh, there is a story about uh, competing conceptions of informed consent. And I think that story is about uh, 13 years old now. So in the beginning of the 2000s, we had a huge focus on uh, how to re regulate biobank research. Uh, the first solution we came up with, at least in Norway, was to kind of uh, take the old solution, the specific informed consent, and uh, put it into our laws. So we had a biobank law in 2003 saying that uh, we should uh, have a specific informed consent and whenever you use a biological sample from a human being for a slightly different purpose, you should ask again. And this way of understanding the informed consent was troublesome for the researchers. So uh, they saw it as a kind of hindrance to good research and a hindrance to social and societal interest. Uh, some call it uh, this concept of specific informed consent, individualistic, uh, and uh, opposing the interest of science, and uh, with no good reason since this is kind of low risk research. So many ethicists as well as researchers had uh, criticism against the specific uh, consent in uh, biobank research, and this criticism was heard. So. After a while, uh, kind of new agreement in certain circles uh, uh, were concerned about the broad consent, or the broad consent, this concept where was introduced. And uh, you have uh, gone through the Health, Health Research Act uh, earlier today, but uh, in this act, this uh, concept of broad consent is presented for the first time. And this is a kind of answer to the first wave of criticism, that now we have a, a consent concept that actually works with biobank research. So it's a kind of um, practical approach. But also this concept um, were criticized, uh, and a kind of new wave of criticism came against the broad concept, consent. Uh, and this uh, criticism uh, uh, mainly amounted to, to the point that you cannot consent to something that you don't know what is. So you cannot consent to the unknown future. So uh, the kind of cons concept, broad consent, is meaningless. Um, some of those uh, criticizing broad consent were opposing this kind of research. Um, others said that we can do it if we just change the concept. So we could use a concept like authorization or something like that, uh, but don't call it co uh, informed consent because it's not informed consent. Um, but this situation that we still are discussing uh, different types of consent uh, was not kind of satisfactory. So we have even a third position saying that we can, maybe we can solve this. Maybe we could have the best from specific consent together with the kind of the accessibility and practicality of, of the broad consent. And uh, then we are into the dynamic consent coming up from, from around uh, 2008, uh, being discussed in, in, uh, in many different circles. Um, and the dynamic consent is a kind of technological solution on the consent problem. So we could use modern technology and try to solve the consent problem in that sense. So people are always will be updated, always informed, uh, and uh, researchers can, can know for sure that they always will have a valid consent for their research. So I think uh, the speakers today will, will um, 
present or represent all these different concepts of uh, consent. Uh, maybe not the broad cons uh, consent, because many of them will oppose that. But I am representing the broad consent because I actually believe uh, the broad consent as a meaningful uh, construction. But I can come back to that uh, later on in the debate if we have time for that. But uh, the tension here is between these uh, competing uh, conceptions of uh, what kind of consent is a valid consent. And um, first speaker out is uh, Harriet Thier uh, from the Helix Center for Health, Law and Emerging Technologies, Department of Public Health uh, in the University of Oxford. And you have been working in a group uh, that actually has became synonymous with this idea of dynamic consent, and you have published on that. And we are very eager to hear, is this the real solution on the consent problem? 